Okay, so pointers and references both can point to a variable's memory address. Both can modify it. The only exception to that is if you have like a constant pointer, right? Which we don't really get into. But if you declare a pointer constant, then it can't modify a variable because you said I want this pointer to point to that address read only. <clears throat> it works like the const reference, right? So the const reference gives you direct access to a memory location in read mode, meaning you cannot uh, change the value that's in that address, okay? <clears throat> a reference can point to one variable. That's it. Like once you assign it to one variable, you cannot uh, change it to point to a different variable while the program is running. A pointer, you can point to one variable and then have it point to another variable while the program is running. Okay, so that's another, uh, that's a difference. The biggest difference is that with a pointer, you can create new memory on the heap. So when you, your program is running, you as a programmer can create memory on the heap. That's how the string works. That's how the vector works. I'm pretty sure that's how Python lists, strings, C sharp, Java stuff works behind the scenes, right? Uh, however, those three other languages, they don't give they don't give you direct access to the memory locations like C++ does, right? C, C++, uh, many say like it'll, I mean, it'll let you shoot yourself on the foot, right? Because it's like, you know how to use memory? Okay. You know. Then uh, when you when we encounter all those uh, issues, then we're like, oh, I guess I don't know how to use memory. So uh, questions on references and pointers? Just a brief overview of what we covered uh, toward the end of the class. <clears throat> and these these two concepts. Uh, if you learn them, they'll make your life easier right? in, in this class and in uh, programming three. So you, you understand them, you'll know like how to uh, create lists and stuff. Okay, so no questions. Okay. Okay, so this was an introduction, right, to pointers and to references we still want to go ahead and create a test case using functions with both of them mainly with pointers right we haven't seen that but I'll, I'll still create for both of them let me see here we were in memory and we were here and we'll go to okay so we'll say uh, void uh, ref pointer params and for one, we'll say we want to create num1. And then for another one, we'll say pointer to num2. So we want to inspect how they work as parameters. You know, if you understand the concept, then you should understand that these two parameters can change the incoming variable's value. So let's go here. Also, uh, I think it was Peter who had stayed late and asked me about references. And I've made the, the statement that references are not on the stack. But uh, I did some research. <clears throat> and the C++ uh, guideline does, it doesn't, it doesn't say, like, you should put references in some other memory location or you should put references on the stack. So what that means is it, dep it depends on the compiler creators, right? Like how they implement that piece, right? So it may be on the stack. It may not be on the stack, right? But we're not going to take points off if you put it on the stack or not on the stack, right? Because it depends on the, on the provider for the development tools. <clears throat> okay. So uh, num1 equals uh, 5 and then we'll say num2 equals 10 I guess yeah. and notice uh, number 7 is frowning at us right <clears throat> mainly because it's a pointer and remember if 
we are working with pointers and we do not include the dereference operator or the asterisk at the beginning. C++ things, we want to work with addresses, meaning we want to save the address from another variable into this pointer. But in this case, we want to work with the value that this pointer will point to. And notice now it's OK. So that's another syntactical difference between, num, uh, between references and pointers, right? You want to work with values <clears throat> in the pointer domain? Please do not forget the asterisk or the dereference operator. Fancy term for go to the address that you are pointing to and modify that value. That's what dereference means. Okay. Okay, so we have brief pointer params, and let's go and create a test case for this. Test case, test uh, reference and pointer parameters. So we'll say num1 equals 1, num2 equals 2. Uh, let's include ref pointers up here. Uh, when you are working in homework assignments, never include CPP. Always include dot h files okay um, I know why some students are are including CPP because they're trying to run their programs from here like they go here and <clears throat> let me scroll up here they right click on on main and they or, or they select main and then they select this run button but the configuration that we have here goes off working with CMake right so if you if you do this, uh, then your program doesn't work, and then you start experimenting, and it's kind of like, well, .h didn't work. Let me put CPP. Oh, that worked, but that's not that's not the correct way to uh, to do it, right? So, even though it works, like usually, uh, even in the industry, there's some scripts in the background that like stitch the .h's and the .cpp's together, and I briefly mentioned them, right? It's this piece here that stitches everything together. But we don't focus on that in this class because those are for build engineers, right? So so maybe like 10, 20 years ago, like developers <clears throat> were responsible for everything in the development life cycle. But as <clears throat> uh, software engineering has matured, like they've separated responsibilities, right? Developers are only responsible for writing code. Uh, database people are only responsible for the database and now there's like a release or build engineers their job is to make sure that they know how to get your code from a source code repository like github and then they have special tools uh, that creates the build for for us right like the build means like either the package that's going to be deployed to the web server or the executable that's gonna be in, uh, wrapped up into an installer package, and then you download that package from the internet, it'll install some uh, software in your machine, that's what that means, right? So, uh, But we don't focus on that in this class, we just focus on uh, coding, uh, because I don't believe that you gain a lot of benefit in learning that. I mean, you can always uh, do a search later, CMake, tutorial and then you can go to that tutorial and then you can understand how all this stuff goes and, and stitched together <clears throat> okay so let's see we call uh, ref control space parameters and then we say num1 and remember anytime you work with pointers you have to use the memory operator so we say hey uh, I'm going to send you the address of a uh, variable num2 if we forget to do that, then uh, C++ uh, doesn't like that, right? Right, so it's saying, uh, let me make sure that I show you the whole output. So notice int is incompatible with parameter of type integer pointer or pointer to integer. So we want to send an address, right? We want to send the address. 
where num2 lives. And now the pointer knows how to work with addresses, and it's like, oh, okay, uh, you see pointer? It's like, okay, you're sending me an address. I know how to work with addresses, so I will uh, not return an error. <clears throat> and then we set two assertions, right? We say require that num1 equals something, and then require that num2 equals something. So is num1 equal to 1 or equal to 5 after we execute this statement here? It's going to be, keep on coming up because it's important that, that students understand this concept. It'll make your life easier in exams, right? So anyone? It's a reference, right? So if we look at the <clears throat> Signature num1 is a reference. So will the value be 1 or will the value be 5? Will it be 1 or will it be 5? Okay, we have a student who chimes in. 5, okay. So since Samuel's the only one who answered, we'll say 5. Okay, what about num2, right? Num2 equals 2. We have a pointer, and then we say uh, change the value to 10. So will that one be 2 or 10 right here? <clears throat> 10, right? Okay. And that is the case, right? Reference gives you access to that memory location. You can read, you can write it. Pointer will also give you to that variable's memory location. You can read and you can write it. So this function should be green. So let's see. Run in terminal. And uh, green, but we're always double checking ourselves so we can look at the details and notice 5 equals 5 and 10 equals 10. So, I mean, that shouldn't have been a surprise, right? If uh, you followed uh, this examples, right? That should never have been a surprise. Okay, uh, any questions on reference and pointer parameters? No questions. Okay, and just to uh, make sure that you remember, if we say const then we cannot modify oops if I can type we will not be able to modify values, okay? Why? Because const means give me access to that variable's memory address in read-only mode, okay? So that's why. So let me revert this back, otherwise my code will not <coughs> compile. But I just wanted to remind you that anytime you use const, it's read-only no matter what. Okay, let me check this in. Mm, create return pointer function. Okay, um, we're not ready to talk about that yet. Okay, so for now I'll skip that example. Let me add the changes, make a commit. <clears throat> okay. Close out.
Okay, so now that we know about pointers, we can go into our class main. So let's go here, uh, bank account main. And now let's see if uh, we can modify this piece of code. So we can create a vector to pointer to bank accounts, right? So let's create a vector of pointer to bank accounts. Meaning uh, we say, okay, pointer. And notice that everything's like every now. We have to modify some code. So let's go to ATM. We're going to work with a list of, oops, a list of uh, pointer to bank account types. <clears throat> if we modify that here, we have to modify it here. Okay. And let's go back to main. We've got some errors, but we'll address them. Okay. So now we can say... Uh, Checking, add it to the list. Mm, 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 mm. And all these syntactical rules. <clears throat> Savings. In my case, um, um, learning this stuff to me was a no-brainer because it was either this or go to work with my with my father, right? <laughs> and I didn't want to go work with him. So, okay, let's see here. <clears throat> Another syntactical difference uh, between references and pointers. When you are working with pointers, I mean with references, you use dot notation. <clears throat> when you are working with pointers, we have to use what's known as address, I mean arrow notation. It's a dash and a greater than sign. So notice how now the code's okay. So remember, references, you use dot notation pointers arrow notation <clears throat> so you can always ask that question when you're trying to access something you're like is this a reference or a pointer or a regular variable references and regular variables dot notation pointers <clears throat> arrow notation arrow notation when what's in accounts checking right so how do you access a function from a checking account instance get balance right so let me go back here and show you right so checking dot <clears throat> why because this is a just a variable right we didn't create a pointer <clears throat> but if we create a reference then it works the same so <clears throat> that's why you say like is it a pointer arrow notation if it's not a pointer then dot notation okay that's that's what I did back in the day, just to remind myself of all this syntactical stuff. Okay, we have to go into ATM CPP to address the red marks, right? Okay, so <clears throat> we have uh, counts, and what is it saying here? Okay, what are we storing? Pointers, right? So if we're storing, if we're storing a pointer, then we need to say, okay, I want a pointer here, right? And notice now it's like, okay, uh, since accounts, you have bank account or pointer to bank account types. When you want to access one, then you have to say, I want to create a pointer to one bank account, okay? And then we name the variable account, and then we can access either the first element or the second element. Here, we have to come in here and say uh, pointer, which means I have to go change the signature for the dot h also uh, here. Uh, 
and then I go back to CPP and notice now the function is okay here no errors pointer so then I ask myself the question right is account a pointer yes so then I have to use arrow notation arrow notation arrow notation okay no red marks okay that's good questions here this was mainly just in tactical stuff right but we're trying to now uh, work with pointers because we were not able to create a uh, reference list but we can create a pointer list right think uh who was it Chutian, right? She's the one who did the search. Uh, I knew that, but I uh, just forgot, right? I don't work C++ every day. Like every day I use Java at work, so C++ I just use it for, for the classes here. Okay. Uh, any questions? Again, the program should run the same, right? So. Okay, so maybe let's try to run this. Clear. And move this to the right. The running terminal. Okay, so one for checking, two for savings, one. What do you have? Balance, 100. Okay. Display balance, 100. Deposit, 25. Uh, balance, 125. Withdraw, 20. Display balance, 105. Okay. Uh, we have to exit, right? And then we'll choose another one. Okay, so let me run it again. So two for savings, we should see 300 for balance. 300, okay. Uh, deposit, 50. Balance. Um, did I, oh, invalid option. Oh, <laughs> okay, let me try it again. Uh, two, deposit, uh, enter amount, 50. Get balance, 350. Withdraw, 20. Balance, 330. Exit. Okay, so our program is running as we expect, right? So we still have that issue with savings account where, uh, let me see here. It's not adding five. To our balance right so if you notice the output let me go here if we're adding five then this should be 305 but it didn't meaning it's not executing this get balance overwritten savings account uh, or bank account get balance function it's, it's running the bank account so if we go to the bank account header it's running this statement which is not what we want I mean if this is what we wanted we never would have gone in here and overwritten the get balance uh, function right for the bank account class so we still got to fix that stuff okay <clears throat> any questions so far on what we have done like we've introduced pointers and we've created pointers and maybe what we need to do so that students understand what is going on is uh, <clears throat> a memory diagram right and also notice that with pointers at the end we have balance 330 in our program and it persists the balance right <clears throat> recall uh, in Tuesday's example, 
it was not until I had to do some fancy stuff to, to make it work, right? <clears throat> so let's walk through this just to make sure that students understand, okay? So I'll walk through it one more time and then I'll create a memory diagram, okay? So we say let's create a list or a vector of bank account types or pointer to bank accounts, right? We name it accounts. Empty list right here. We create a checking account. Uh, this is on the stack, okay? And then we add it to the vector. This is the key right here. The reason that the value persists, we say, hey, like, work with the address of checking. So wherever checking is, that's what the vector is going to be referencing, OK? And then uh, savings account, uh, 300, same thing, memory operator. So run menu. It's referencing the memory location for savings and for checking. So anytime we work with them, it'll be modifying the original variables value, OK? Which is what we want. Somewhere here, like before the program would end, we would like save to database and we would be saving uh, the correct values. Actually, for the bank, we'd, we'd be probably saving it instantly, right? Because we, we don't want uh, discrepancies. OK, so let us diagram this. And uh, hopefully that helps you. Let me see here. Um, one note. So opening the wrong one. Well, we'll see. I think this is the right one. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go and look at some code. Let me see. What do we get? Yeah. This is good enough. That's all we are interested in. Okay, uh, my pen here. Uh, free store heap. Okay, let's load main. Assuming this this is in main, okay, the statements are in main. So we load uh, main. Okay, accounts right there. So far it's an empty list, so there's nothing allocated on the heap yet. We create a checking account of 100 so let's assume that it was these two boxes right so I'll say checking the checking goes there and then we need a pushback okay so we make a pushback the memory of checking okay so let me make up some numbers here uh, Ah, that's not the color I wanted. Um, this one. This is nine nine six uh, nine nine two nine eight eight. Okay, so we're like, okay, push back the address of checking, right? And it's always remember, it's always the beginning address. So we're like, okay, let's assume that on the stack. Uh, what color should I use? Red, I guess. We get this address, whatever, right? Some Y address. And what goes here? 
this statement. So can someone tell me what goes in here? This is 1000, 996, If you remember what this operator does, then you know the answer. Professor, what I know is 10, basically, I think. 10? Let me see here. 996, right? Remember, this means we're working with addresses. What do pointers work with? Pointers work with addresses. So we're like, let me send you the address of checking, right? So then x996 goes here, right? So. No, this one always points to the first address, so right there. 996. And then we create a savings. Okay, so let's create a savings. Uh, what color? Oh. Wherever this one. Okay, so then we need savings. 988 right so push back the address of savings so what goes here nine eight eight right so x nine eight eight and then we can say uh, what color is it purple okay I'll use purple so we're like oh so in essence you are pointing to that one and you are pointing to that one right so that's that's what's happening let me go here 988 yeah <clears throat> so that's how our diagram looks right like we have the accounts point accounts list pointing to its elements on heap and then we have heap individual elements referencing variables that are on the stack. The checking variable and then the savings variable. And notice the code here, that, that's what it does, right? So, so understanding this, like it will make you a, a better programmer, right? Now hopefully you can see that maybe it's not too obvious, right? But what we have here, stack small and we're storing items on the st on on stack right so it's kind of like hey wait a minute like are we eventually going to run out of memory we keep on expanding the list right so we need a way to store the data or variable stuff over here right savings too like remember this is like two to four gigabytes this is about 10 24 kilobytes we'll exhaust if we keep this up i mean we'll exhaust the stack memory and our program will crash but that's okay like our concept here is to understand how memory uh works with pointers and references so hopefully uh this gives you an idea of everything that's going on here right like this looks like kind of like okay like not too complicated code but then like mapping that to the diagram we can get uh, an idea of what's going on and we're like oh like we, we can't create a big list with this type of coding we will crash our program right so we have to uh, introduce uh, new concepts uh, to help us understand how to get around this uh, not, it's really a non-issue, right? I mean, we're uh, learning, and I have to like go step by step to show you like how memory works. What's another thing? So I said references and pointers. Pretty much, point to variables can modify variables. You can reassign <coughs> variable addresses to pointers. And then I said there's one more thing you can do with pointers, and that is to create memory on the heap. So that's how we get around this limitation, where we are storing the data for variables, oops, I moved the image over here, on the stack, right? So 
if our pointers can create memory for us on the heap, it's kind of like, whoa, like that's a new, that's a game changer for us, right? Like we're like, oh, like that's good. Like it'll make our, our life a lot easier, okay? So let me uh, make sure that I save this then before I start making more code changes, okay? Uh, change uh, or use pointers. A list of pointer to bank account. Okay. Stage uh, commit. Okay. So let me let me look at one thing. I want to see classes to. I just want to see, um, uh, make sure I'm on the right path. Let me go here. First. I have to look at where I'm at because in the fall, like I know like the lectures, the lectures for every day, but since this is summer, like some lectures I have to modify a little bit. So I'm making sure that I don't go off, off track. Oops, not this one. Uh, we can look at this one spring let me look at the commits that will orient me all those commits we still have to go through in this class okay let me see here so intro to pointers and reference view uh, okay we modified to use pointers, and let's uh, look at this piece here. Uh, polymorphism with pointers and virtual functions. Okay, uh, let me see here. Uh, open in tab. Let's make sure. Okay. We can close this, we can close this. Let me, so we recall that we're dealing, I was saying like savings account doesn't seem to be executing its function, right? So we want, we want savings account to execute its get balance. Why, why do we want that? I mean, why else would we want to, if we wrote the code for it, then it's like, hey, I want this code to run, right? Because savings accounts will usually generate some kind of interest, right? And we want to account for that in this hypothetical example. So let me go here and uh, go here. virtual and let me go back here and let me quickly do a build okay uh, that's good let's clear here and let's go run our program again Okay, uh, savings number two. Display balance uh, three hundred. Okay, so we're still uh, not there. Let me see here. Uh, exit. Let me look at bank uh, ATM. We're expecting the three hundred five to appear. So let me see here. Uh, Pointer. Uh, 
Uh, okay, let me try here. For now, let me comment this piece out. This piece out. <clears throat> Create a, a bank account pointer. We'll say account. And then we'll say checking or no savings account savings uh, 300. And then we want to say account equals the address of savings. And then we want to say see out savings, not savings, sorry, account. get balance okay and let's run this run in terminal uh, still 300 uh, hold on let me look at this example again uh, get hub mm. Spring and we go look at that commit. That should be this one. Okay, uh, virtual. Let me see, let me look at the signatures again. Let me see here. Uh, bank account checking. Okay, actually, okay, I found I found the issue, uh, which is actually good. I stumbled onto like something that helps us from doing this, right? So look at uh, the signature here get balance and then the code starts right and then let's go here and notice we're just focused on this get balance so what's the difference right let me copy this let me assuming right so so there's a difference in the signatures right so const does not exist in savings so in essence I was not overriding the function, right? Which is uh, actually very common, right? When we're writing code in a hurry, but C++ uh, helps us with that, with the keyword override. Uh, 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 let me see where did I put it. Um, oh, it's oh. Crazy syntax, okay. I don't like this stuff. Okay, so it goes here. Okay, so notice here, like so what this does, we're telling C, hey, I want to override a get balance from bank account go check to see <clears throat> that one exists and right here is telling me function declared with override does not override a base class uh, member function right why because the signatures don't match I'm missing const but if I add const here then that error 
hopefully goes away, right? So notice that error goes away. So now I am overriding, really overriding, right? That was uh, my mistake. But uh, actually, this is very common. Like uh, sometimes we're like reviewing code and we're staring at the code, and then we're like, oh, we're not overriding the signature's wrong, right? So, but this keyword will help us guard against that. So NT++. I think uh, the other languages uh, offer it too. Uh, okay, so we're good. So let me clear the terminal. Let's run it again. Waiting. Notice now it is running the savings account get balance, right? So why wasn't it before? Again, that was a syntactical error on my part. I was doing a integer get balance, but if I want to overwrite this one, I have to use the keyword const here, and now I'm overriding one. The signature has to match, otherwise <clears throat> I run into issues, but if we use this override keyword, it'll help us eliminate the error that I that I uh, caused, right? So questions here? Uh, no questions? Okay, no questions. Yep, so now we should be able to go back to main. We can eliminate this short example here. And now our main uh, code should return balance plus five for <clears throat> this one. Okay, so let's run it. Okay, um, savings. We have what? Um, 300? Okay. Display balance? 305, right? So so now, like, that's what we want, right? I mean, if we overwrite a function, then, then we do it because we want that piece of code to execute, right? So what we just did is we've implemented polymorphism, right? Like some scary word. It means, I think it's from Greek origin. It means to take on many forms, right? So here, in essence, the bank account can behave as a checking account or a savings account while it's running. So uh, that's polymorphism. We need two components for polymorphism pointers and the virtual keyword and we have to override a function properly right uh, but to safeguard we use the keyword override right just to make sure that we are really overriding something from the base class and uh, that's the concept of polymorphism uh, question sir <clears throat> We have five minutes, okay. So let me check this piece in. Uh, okay, virtual keyword and pointers, right? So that's what we need. Vir I think it's virtual. I'm not sure if I run out of space. Virtual, okay, I did it. Vun virtual functions and pointers uh, make, a, make a function beha behave uh, 
in many different ways. They say polymorphic, polymorphic or whatever, right? <laughs> so that word always scared me. Okay, so stage all changes, commit. Okay, so an issue that I've addressed is, or that I've brought up is, we'll eventually run out of memory here. So we need a way to create memory on the heap. We can use the keyword new, but that brings like a whole lot of issues. Like we have to learn how to how to write code uh, in classes using uh, dynamic memory. We need to implement five five uh, rules, which we don't have time to do that. We will eventually. So instead, what I show students is I just show students real quick. This is how you can make dynamic memory. This is how you can free it. And it's uh, actually very troublesome to implement so we don't do this we use instead smart pointers <clears throat> like the string is a smart pointer behind the scenes it creates memory for you uh, it lets you add to a string if you run out of uh, elements it'll expand the string for you remember I showed you with the code examples and the diagrams the vector is also like a smart pointer uh, you can add once the list uh, capacity is exhausted, it creates more space for you, moves the elements. Those are uh, some type of smart pointers. So we will uh, be introduced to smart pointers in the second piece of the class, but for now I, I briefly want to show you about how to create dynamic memory. Okay, so let me go here. What do we have? Uh, four minutes, yeah. This is a short example. We will revisit it in about a week or two. But for now, I just want to make sure that you at least get an idea of what's going in, on inside strings and vectors and even that Python list that you all were introduced to, the Python dictionary. So we go here, and then we go to dynamic memory, and we go here. Okay. Uh, so we have to say uh, include iostream. And then we create a pointer. I will say integer pointer, right? Integer pointer, and then we can say equals new integer, right? So a pointer combined with the keyword new. Then dynamically means that not until this statement is executed will some memory be created for you on the heap, right? So the steps are easy. Create memory. Right, this is what's kind of going on in the string. Just giving you a high level idea. Use the memory. Uh, so we use memory. Uh, we can say C out. Remember, we want to display the value. So we say int pointer. Free or delete memory from the heap or the free store, right? Depending on who you are talking with. Uh, using C out. And then uh, to free the memory, we have to say delete, right? So that removes memory from the heap. So this statement 8 creates one 4-byte memory block on the heap for us. <clears throat> this one uses, this one frees it, right? So let's quickly run this program. I will not have time to diagram it right now, but I'll diagram it after the break. So let's go here. And where am I? Uh, memory. Dynamic. Running terminal. So notice 10, right? So. Uh, 
yeah I don't have time to diagram it I will show you so if you remember how the string and the vector points to elements on the heap that's more or less how this diagram will look but I think well, let me see let's just do it right now that way we can start a fresh new topic um, after the break even if we don't take the break at exactly 705 so let me show you this type of programming is very problematic so I mean I introduce it just to give you an idea of what's happening inside the smart pointers that we'll talk about in the second uh, part of the class so I'll go here okay dynamic memory and uh, we're actually only interested in this statement here and then delete okay so let me draw here so let's draw a stack heap or free store main gets loaded gets its chunk of memory we have the pointer there and then we have uh, this piece it'll give us memory somewhere right remember uh, heap is uh, random so assuming it chose that block so in that block we will have the value 10 this will be like some address maybe like 1110 meaning this one points there let me eliminate this here so we won't get confused uh, this one we'll put that here and then y110 1110 one, 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 or 1110 goes there that's just this statement here okay once the second statement executes that means free the memory free the memory so that means uh, do not reference that memory and then the 10 will stay there right but this block of memory here will be available for our program to reuse right <clears throat> so something like this is going on inside the string right and the vector right? they create memory and then before the class is removed from the function scope then that memory is deleted okay so uh, we will talk about we won't use this type of coding mainly because it's very uh, even for like experienced programmers this is very error prone instead I will introduce smart pointers and that's what we'll use uh, to show you how to work with uh, classes and dynamic memory okay later on we will talk about dynamic memory we'll have a lecture of about uh, two three different lectures where we talk about creating memory in classes okay so for now let's take a break we'll be back at 7 14 7 14 so let me stop recording